All right, we're going to bring you that press conference from new LNP leader Lawrence Springborg. Start, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> uh, thank you very much uh, for coming along, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you very much in particular for uh, your forbearance uh, as our parliamentary party room of the LNP has met today to elect a new leadership team. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, our parliamentary colleagues have elected myself as leader of the parliamentary team of the LNP and John Paul Langbrook as deputy leader of the parliamentary team of the LNP. We also thank very much our colleagues for the trust that they have placed in us today. Uh, they believe that we had the right level of competence and experience to take our a parliamentary part, party forward in uh, what are very interesting times in Queensland. And I think it's probably fair to say for those that have observed politics in Queensland over a long period of time that nothing should really ever surprise us with regards to those particular outcomes. As we also know, ladies and gentlemen, the result is still very unclear in Queensland. It could go on for a matter of days or potentially even a matter of weeks, depending on what happens with regards to Fernie Grove. But uh, what I've indicated to my parliamentary colleagues today is that we are still the caretaker government in Queensland. We still are privileged and honour to hold commissions in this state as ministers and therefore we have a duty and obligation to the people of Queensland to ensure that we continue to carry out the mechanics of government on their behalf. Ladies and gentlemen, this certainly is a matter of trust. It is a matter of competence and it is a matter of experience. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, myself and John Paul will be making sure that the trust that our parliamentary colleagues have placed in us uh, can be replicated uh, across the people of Queensland as we seek to build their trust as well into the future. We also understand that whilst there were parts of the LNP uh, plan uh, which were uh, rejected by the people of Queensland last weekend, such as the asset leasing. There are other parts of our plan for Queensland which still remain extremely relevant for the people of this state, including our fine record of economic management, including the fact that if you look at John Paul's portfolio, for example, we have seen dozens of new schools where we're now starting to plan and build across Queensland. We're now seeing a significant improvement in the results of education, not only in Queensland but also right across Australia using the national indicators. If you look at the portfolio of health, for example, our surgery out guarantee started on the 1st of February this year with less than 100 long wait elective surgery patients who are on that particular waiting list. We started when we took over from Labor with about six and a half thousand. So there are so many good news stories and that is the first such elective surgery guarantee in, in, in Australia. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is our intention to uh, make sure that whatever the outcomes may be of the uh, further discussions with the crossbenchers and also the results in the various seats, that we keep the trust and the faith of Queensland people by ensuring that we are a competent caretaker government and that we can continue to administer this state on their behalf until there is a very definite outcome and conclusion for them. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we also do know that whilst we did have a plan for Queensland and do have a plan for Queensland, our opponents don't. And I think that it is also uh, beholden on them to make sure that they can now explain where their $1.7 billion worth of savings are going to come from and all of those other issues which are very, very unclear to the people of this state. The one thing that the LNP can continue to offer in Queensland is stability. Stability in caretaker government and if we're given the privilege of the Commission because we're able to negotiate uh, outcomes with the crossbenchers, then I can assure the people of Queensland that they will be able to have experienced, competent government that can do the things which are important for them. I'll just con conclude on this point uh, before I ask JP to make a few comments. We understand the people of Queensland were disappointed in certain aspects of our government. We understand that the people of Queensland uh, wanted us to be far more empathetic with the concerns they had. We understand that the people of Queensland want us to know that as we have to make those particular decisions, which aren't always popular, 
but sometimes we have to make them that we actually have a proper consideration in a compassionate and real way about the impacts and the consequences of those decisions as necessary as they may be. And I think, ladies and gentlemen, that's probably an area where we were not able to display the level of empathy and the level of concern and consideration that the people of Queensland understood uh, or wanted us to understand, notwithstanding that they um, did, um, uh, did understand themselves that some of the decisions we made were necessary, but they just felt that they didn't like the way we did things. So we understand that. We're going to be making sure that as we travel forward, whether it be in hopefully government or opposition, that we be rebuild that faith and trust which the people of Queensland should invariably expect of their elected representatives. JP, you might like to make some comments. Well, thank you, Lawrence. Uh, can I say how nice it is, uh, how wonderful it is to have been elected by uh, the parliamentary LNP team to be deputy leader to Lawrence Springborg. Uh, I'm personally very proud of the achievements that we've had in my portfolio of education. I know that Lawrence Springborg has spoken about his in health, and it's that service delivery that I know Queenslanders want. Uh, on a, and expect from a government uh, delivering in those things that are so important to them.